in the last session is uh, to determine the, uh, the induced EMF or the armature voltage, the inner voltage of the armature, which is EA equals to KA phi omega M. And we have uh, make a brief uh, overview about the winding just to determine the value of K. K equals to N, which is the number of turns times P, which is the number of pulse over pi times A. A is the number of paths. After uh, doing uh, uh, a small uh, brief uh, research about uh, the paths uh, path exactly, the number of paths related to the arrangement uh, to the arrangement of armature winding. Uh, the armature winding consists of uh, multi multiple coils. Th those coils are connected in series and divided as a number of ports. So, if we have a lap winding, if we have a lap winding, the number of paths always equals to the number of ports. If we have lap winding. If we have a wave winding, the number of paths always is two. Okay, so to understand this, we have to go deeper in the design, which is uh, may take a lot of explanation. I tried, even me, I, I, I didn't know how to explain it exactly. But it depends on the type of the arrangement of armature winding. But what is important, the number of paths in parallel, parallel paths is equal to the number of poles if the winding is lap winding. This is lap winding. And if the winding is wave winding, the number of paths always is, always is two. So K equals to NP over pi a and uh, the armature voltage ea equals to ka which is the we can call it the, uh, the armature constant times phi times omega m which is uh, the mechanical speed measured in measured in radian per second after that we have seen that the speed of the motor can be given also by a revolution uh, per per minute well, the relationship between n, which is the speed in RPM, and omega m, which is speed in the radian, n equals to 60, 60 over 2 pi. 60 because the minute uh, has uh, 60 seconds, and revolution, revolution has 2 pi radian. So the relationship between the speed given in RPM and the speed given is uh, in radian per second is 60 over 2 pi. Also, the armature voltage can be given in terms of N, which is the speed measured in RPM. So today we are going to see, uh, after that we have seen the armature voltage can be expressed, where VA is the voltage, is the terminal voltage of of the machine so whatever the machine is is uh, is motor or generator we have an induced emf even in the motor however in the motor we call it back emf okay in the motor we call it back emf in the generator we call it emf this is ea which is an induced voltage even if we have a motor this voltage will be induced in the motor we call it back EMF, and in the generator we call it EMF. RA, RA, RA is the armature resistance. However, this, this resistance includes the, resi the, the inner, the internal resistance of the, arma the armature winding. However, it may, it may include another resistances, for example, uh, RA is the, the internal armature winding resistance 
For example, if we have a series field winding, this, this uh, cannot be found in all machines. Sometimes we found it, sometimes we don't found it. Series field winding, because the field can, can, uh, can have a single winding and can have multiple winding. Okay. Also, the compensating winding, which are extra winding, uh, extra winding, they may be added in the machine. And we are going to see why we add those compensating winding. So generally, the, the, the voltage, the, the, uh, the armature voltage or the induced voltage equals to the terminal voltage plus or minus, depends on motor or generator, e, uh, IA times R. The sum of R, which is, this term is a voltage drop. Also, the speed, since the EA equals to KA times phi times omega M, we can calculate, determine the speed in terms of voltage. So, omega M equals to VA plus or minus IA times RA over KA times phi. So, uh, is how we have done uh, last year, last uh, session. Today, uh, I added another point, which has not been uh, done in the in the old version of the course, but I, I I see that it's very important, which is the developer torque of the PC machine. So, for. Uh, for the current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, so we have seen two, two, two cases. The case of the motor, which we use the, uh, the law of the Faraday of the induced EMF, and the case of uh, the case of the generator, which we use the Faraday's law of the electromotion, uh, electro, electro emotional uh, EMF, which is the voltage. And the case of the motor, when we use the law of the force. So if we have a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, the force, the produced force, it will be given as F equals to B I L, where B is the, the, the magnetic field density, I is the current, and L is the length of the conductor. The torque, look, to this, uh, to this figure, this is the pivot of the rotation of this uh, machine. And when we have a force, the torque equals to what? The torque is the force times the arm of the force. And you have seen maybe in the vibration that the arm of the force equals to what? Equals to, uh, is the distance between uh, between uh, what? Between the uh, the pivot, the rotation pivot, and the point where the force is applied. And we say uh, Okay, so the arc of the force here is R. So the torque T, the torque T equals to what? Equals to F times R. So R is this distance between the pivot and the point where the, the force is applied. The application point. So the average torque developed by the conductor. So if we replace F by, by uh, its expression, the torque equals to what? Equals to BL. So IA over A times R, so which is the current per path. So if we have uh, an armature winding, the current will be divided per path, and we have uh, seen this number of paths. So by replace F in this expression, we get this. Also, uh, B equals to what? B is the magnetic field density which equals to phi over A. And A is the area 
per pole. The cylindrical area of the cylindrical area of the armature winding per pole. So A equals to what? A equals to 2 pi R L, which is which is the surface of the cylinder, the side surface, over B, which is the number of poles. So B equals to what? B equals to 5 times B over 2 pi R L. So by replacing B with its value in this expression, we get this. The torque equals to what? Equals to 5 P over 2 pi times I A over L. So this is a case of conductor. So if we have a loop, if you have a loop like this, the loop have, has two conductors. So the torque of the loop equals to what? Equals to phi times P over pi times A times I A. This is the torque developed by, by the loop. Now, in case if we in case of armature windings, we just multiply this torque by the number of turns. So the total torque developed by the armature winding equals to what? Equals to N P over pi A times phi times I A. And this constant is the same constant we have seen in the expression of the induced EMF. So NP over pi A is KA, which is the armature, the armature uh, constant. So the torque also can be given in terms of armature constant. So the torque is K, KA times phi times I A. So this is the torque developed by the torque developed by the armature winding. Also, we know that the torque always has a relationship between the power uh, with the with the power. So the developed power of the motor is the torque multiplied by by the speed. However, the developed power is different from the output power and it's different from the input power. The developed power is the power inside the motor. Okay, so we, uh, uh, in some books they call it transmission power. So the power transmitted from, uh, from part to part in, in the machine. Okay, so we are going to see an example to uh, that conclude those uh, things we have uh, seen uh, now. The relationship between always you you, you notice that always the, the, the key expressions I I make them the, in this orange uh, rectangle. So we, for example, this one is very important expression. Also the expression of the torque. So we are going to see an example in order to uh, clarify uh, things a bit. Okay. So, okay. So now we have two important or three important expressions, which are the expression of the induced EMF E and the expression of the torque. And from those, we can uh, extract another expressions. So we have a four-pole DC machine has an armature radius of 12.5 centimeter and an effective length of 25 centimeter. Why uh, they call it effective length? Uh, it's the length that uh, that uh, across, that's crossed by uh, the magnetic field because uh, the armature has an extra length of the shaft and uh, the, the the commutator. But but uh, that part that crossed by 
uh, that crossed by uh, the magnetic field, it's, uh, it's the effective part. Okay, so before uh, solving the exercise, Inshallah, yeah. So, uh, for before uh, solving the exercise, I I found a video, which is a 3D representation of uh, of the DC machine. We can uh, see it. So, you can see here. This is the commutator, and those are those are the brushes. So here is the uh, the friction that we have talked about. Here for you. Here we have an armature coil so this is the magnetic field that produced by the field by the field part so the field part here n s which are the poles the field poles can be can be coils supplied by a dc source and can be also a permanent magnet because the permanent magnet produce a constant magnetic field so this is the armature the armature must be so must must be power uh, this is uh, this case of the motor so if we feed the armature so the current will be flowing th through this winding now you can see those red uh, arrows which are the, which are the direction of the forces so if we have two forces opposite of direction with the same strength a torque will be created that's why the motor Rotate. Okay. So if we want to, uh, if we want to uh, increase that torque, we just increase the number of windings. So that's why we multiply it by the number of turns. So this is the full uh, armature uh, armature winding. Okay. We can you can see now the uh, commutator uh, system with with the brushes so here also as i told you the field can be can be can be a winding not just uh, yes it can be a winding like this so this is the lamination you can see here the sheets that uh, compose the the core of the field so they are compacted sheets like this you can see it i will repeat it again you can see those sheets that compose the the core so they are compacted sheets so we can replace the field winding by uh, by a laminated core with yes which is those are the field windings okay that produce the magnetic field so this is the construction of the dc uh, machine okay so this video just for a uh, demonstration let's go back to our example so a four pole DC machine has an armature of radius 12.5 centimeter and an effective length of 25 centimeter. The armature winding consists of 33 coils, each coil having seven turns. The coils are accommodated in uh, 33 slots. The average flux density uh, is 0 0.75 Tesla. Firstly, determine the, the armature constant, Ka. Determine the induced armature voltage when the armature rotates at 100, uh, 1000 RPM. Determine the electromagnetic torque developed when the armature current is 400 amps. And determine the power developed by the armature. So we are going to use those expressions we have seen before. So firstly, the, the armature constant ka so if the machine is a lab if we consider that the machine is a lab why a lab wounded so we, we we said that if the machine is lab wounded the number of paths parallel paths equals to the number of poles if the machine is wave one wounded the number of paths a equals to two 
So then K equals to what? Equals to NP, number of turns, multiplied by the number of poles over pi times A. So the number of turns equals to what? We have 33 coils. Each coil, each coil has seven turns. So it's seven times 33 multiplied by four, which is the number of poles, over pi multiplied by A. A equals to four because A equals to P. And this is the value of K, which is the armature constant. Is it clear? It's a direct application, okay? It's not magic. It's a direct application of the expression. We have all the data. We have applied the expression uh, directly. Now, determine the induced armature voltage when the armature rotates at 1000 RPM. We can see that the induced armature voltage depends on the speed. Okay, it's proportional to the speed. As much we increase the speed, as much we increase the speed, the induced voltage increases. Okay, so we use directly the expression of the induced voltage EA equals to KA times phi times omega n. So KA has been calculated, the speed is given. Now let's calculate phi. Phi, which is the flux. The flux equals to what? So they give us what? They give us the, the flux density, B. B. B given in Tesla. So B equals to what? B equals to, uh, phi equals to B times A. And A here is the area, the cylindrical area per pole. So it's the cylindrical area per pole. So the cylindrical area is 2 pi RL over P, which is the number of poles. 2 pi times R, which is 12.5 centimeter multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. And L is the length of the effective length of the armature, which is 25 centimeter. So it's multiplied by 2, 10 to the power minus 2 over 4, which is the number of poles. So this is the area per pole. This equals to what? Equals to 49.08 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 meters square because it's an area. Now, phi, the flux, equals to what? Equals to B times A, which is 0 0.75 tesla times zero uh, times 49.08 times 10 to the power minus 3 meters square so the flux is 0 0.0363 weber now the induced emf voltage equals to k times phi times omega m so omega m here it's given in the rpm not in radian per second so to convert it to radian per second we multiplied it by 2 pi and we divide it by 60. so 1000 multiplied by 2, two pi over 60 it's almost uh, it's almost 103 almost then the induced EMF equals to 73.53 times 0 0.0367 times 103 equals to 282.59 volt. So EA is a voltage even in, in volt. Now, the third question is the electromagnetic torque developed by the arm by the uh, when the armature current is 400 amps so directly the direct application the torque equals to ka times phi times ia k has been calculated phi has been calculated the current is given 
73.53 times 0 0.0367 times 400 equals to 1079.42. And the Newton of the torque, is, uh, the unit of the torque is the Newton times meter. So this is the developed torque by the armature. Now the power developed by the armature, the power equals to what? The power equals to the torque multiplied by the speed, omega n, so it's equal to uh, 1079.42 times the speed because it's given in uh, RPM, so it must be converted into radian per second, so the, the speed in RPM multiplied by 2 pi over 60, which is almost 103 or 104, this equals to 100... Uh, 130,000 or, or it can be uh, so we have to omit this point because uh, it's it's written in kilowatt so it's 130,066 uh, kilowatt so you can see it's a high power machine because the current is is very high 400 amps okay is it clear with these expressions? You can see that we uh, we have applied directly directly the expression that we have. Okay, so we, we took time to develop those uh, expressions, but after that, we when we have them, we applied them directly, especially the expression of the expression of the. Uh, uh, the induced EMF, the torque expression, and the speed conversion, and the K expression. So generally, uh, the problems of DC motor came in in this way. If we have time, inshallah, we are going to see another example. Is it clear before moving to the next element? Yes? Okay. Uh, now let's see another, another concept. Okay, I need you to focus. Okay. So, when we have talked about uh, the DC machine, we said that the DC machine has a starter and rotor. But here, especially in the DC machine, we call them field and armature okay so this is the field and this is the armature so so the field winding you you found in the in in the electric machine you found uh, two types of winding so uh, of field winding there are shent field winding and there is also series field winding. The shent field winding have great uh, number of turns and it has a thinner wire. Inshallah, uh, 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 normally you are going to have a lab about the DC motor, especially about this, the shent and the, the shent winding and the series winding in the, in the field. Okay, you will, the motors we have, the machines we have here in the lab have uh, two two field windings, the shunt and the series. So the difference between them, you can see that the shunt the shunt winding. Why? Because the shunt winding it's low current low low current winding. Always it has many number of a great number of turns, and built from thin wire. While the series winding have a less number of turns and has a thick wire because it supports more current okay so here we are not talking about the winding themselves but we have we are talking about the connection of armature and the field winding so we said that if we have for example if we have a, if we have a motor if we have a motor each part the field and the winding both of these parts must be must be powered, must be supplied. The field and 
if we have a motor this part must be powered and this part must be powered if we have a generator this the, the, the field must be supplied even if we have a generator and uh, for example a load will be connected to the armature this in case we have a generator however the connection between between uh, between uh, the field and the armature have many has many many types so if we if we connect them each one is fed with a different source we call this is separately excited because the field called also the excitation so the excitation will be done with a different source so we call this arrangement separately excited machine uh, from where I should repeat okay so I will repeat this part okay so here we are talking about different methods of excitation in electric machine in these machines you we have we have talked about the field and the armature the field may have a single winding may have generally two windings shank winding and a series winding but the, it's not this the issue here what is important is the connection between is the connection between uh, the, the field and the armature we said if we uh, according uh, methods yeah. so look yes I, we, I didn't start yet about the method so we are talking about the connection of those parts so if we feed them separately each one with different source we call this separately excited so let's see the different classification of a DC motor of DC machine so this machine can be can be uh, can be divided into according to their excitation according to their excitation okay according to their excitation so that we have the separately excited so if the field and the armature are connected with different sources and we have self-excited self-excited when the field and the armature are connected to the same source okay separately excited if the field and the armature are filled with different sources self-excited if the field and the armature are connected with the same source and we have the permanent magnet is the case when we replace the field by an armor uh, but by an permanent magnet where so the self-excited the self-excited machine has a different parts different types we have a shunt excited which means that the armature and the field are connected in parallel the series excited which means that the field and the armature are connected in series and the compound excited which means that the field and the armature are connected in parallel and in series in the same time and in the compound excited we have two types we have a long shunt and short shunt however we uh, this compound machine we are not going to focus on it a lot okay so those are the classification i will repeat the classification of these machines according according to their excitation method so we have a separately excited when the field and the armature are connected separately each one is connected to different source self-excited which means that the field and the armature are connected to the same source and the permanent magnet when the field winding is removed and replaced by a permanent magnet so the self-excited the self-excited uh, machines has different types uh, have different types shunt excited when the field and the armature are connected in parallel series excited when the the field and the armature are connected in series compound which mean uh, compound complex 
which means that the field and the armature are connected in series and in parallel in the same plan. We're going to see them in the next slide. Okay. This one is separately excited. We can see that the armature and the field are uh, feed separately. So this machine is the general case. The separately excited machine is the general case. And it's the case which we deal with a lot because it's the, it's the general, it's the general case. Now, self-excited DC machine. So this is when the field is interconnected with the armature winding to the same source, the machine is said to be self-excited because so it's excite uh, itself. The field winding can be connected in three different ways. In series, so this figure, we can see the field winding connected in series with the armature. Uh, in, in, in shant, which means parallel, we can see that here uh, the field winding is connected in parallel. Here in the shunt configuration, we add the resistance here because the shunt winding, we said that the shunt uh, field winding, it's, uh, it's low current, low current uh, winding. So we, we add this resistance just to reduce the current. It's a real star, it's a variable resistance. We add it to reduce the current to the shunt winding. And we have uh, we have uh, the compound. So the compound, we can see that they are connected in series and in parallel in the same time. So both of series winding, field winding are connected. So if we have, here generally the machine, yeah, especially the machines we have in the lab. Machines we have in the lab, they, they can be connected because they, their terminals are accessible you can access all the terminals. So you can connect them in series, in shared, in compound, whatever you want. Okay, that's why they have two field windings. So if the machine connected in series, we use the series field winding. If the machine connected shunt, we use the shunt field winding. If the machine connected compound, we use, use both of them. But in the compound, we have two types. We have a short shunt and we have a long shunt. It depends to the position. It depends to the position of the shunt winding if it's connected before or after or after uh, the armature. I hope uh, those uh, methods is, are clear or uh, should I repeat again? Yes. Yes, you can just take the uh, equivalent circuit, the simplified circuit, and you connect them uh, whatever you want. So, I will repeat. Okay. So, we said that uh, if, the, uh, if the field and the armature are connected separately, are supplied separately, we call this a uh, separately excited DC machine. So we call it separated or independent. Each one is connected to independent source, DC source, of course. So now we have seen the classification. We have the separately excited. We have the permanent magnets. The, the permanent magnets does not need a uh, power source. So because it generates a uh, magnetic field from itself. Well, the self-excited machine has different configuration. We can call them configuration. Shunt excited, series excited, and compound excited. And those, those are the series machine, which where the field winding is connected in series with the armature. The shunt machine is where the shunt winding is connected in parallel to the armature. And we said we add, we add resistance here because the shunt winding it's low current uh, winding, so we add uh, this resistance to protect the shunt winding. 
The compound machine is connected in series and in parallel in the same time. So we can we can see that uh, we can see that uh, the shunt winding are connected both of them in, in one in one in one in series and the second in parallel. Each type each type of this uh, configuration each type of this configuration has of course an advantages and has disadvantages so we are not going through them the, uh, directly a lot deeper i mean but just uh, to give you an example one of the most important application of these machines in our real life which is the railway railway and tramway you know that they use DC machine they still use DC machines uh, for in most applications industrial applications they use AC machines maybe 80 percent they use AC machines but in the real way and tramway they still use DC machines especially the series machine why the series machine because it has uh, has a great startup talk when this machine runs it has a great starting up talk so it's you know if you think that the railway is in use alternative machine it, no it's used dc motors okay especially the series uh, the series configuration okay it's applied in the in the railway and in the tramway those uh, high uh, high power applications okay now after those uh, showing those methods we are talk we are we are, we are going to talk about a phenomenon called the armature reaction so this is a physical phenomenon so you have to focus a bit uh, it's a physical phenomenon that happened in the DC machine. The armature reaction. So, in DC machine, the flux produced basically by what? The flux at the beginning, at the beginning, it's produced by the field winding. Okay, we agree with this. So, in DC machine, the flux is produced basically by the field current. So, by the field winding which is the stator in figure. So this is the flux produced by the field winding. However, when the current, when the current flows in the armature, it, it produces its own flux. Okay. So at the beginning, at the beginning, the flux is produced for excitation purpose, for excitation purpose. The flux is produced by the field winding, by the stator. However, when the current flows in the armature, that armature, it will create its flux. Okay, so you can see here, this is the flux produced by, these flux vectors produced by the field. However, when the current, when the current uh, flowing, in the armature the armature it will create another flux okay so this is flux is created in the armature this new flux will disturb the original flux okay so it produce its own flux that disturbed the original flux distribution due to the field cat so this flux, this new flux, will disturb uh, disturb the uh, the original flux of the field. So you can see here, phi f is the field flux. Okay, and the armature flux. Look at the direction of the armature flux. It's down. This is uh, this is the armature flux. Okay, this is the armature flux. So by doing this, uh, by doing this uh, vector summation, so this is the resulting flux. So field flux, armature flux phi A, phi R is the resulting flux. So you can see that 
the armature flux, the new flux, change, uh, disturb and will, it will change the direction of the flux. And this is will reduce uh, reduce the reduce the flux that produce it because, for example, uh, well, the flux is maximum where where when uh, flux where the flux is maximum. We know that the flux equals to what phi equals to b co uh, b a cosine cosine theta. Well, it's perpendicular. Okay, so this new flux will affect. Uh, will affect uh, this new flux, will affect the original flux. And we call this flux armature reaction. Okay. This new flux called armature reaction. So, I will repeat it. I know it's, it's complicated a bit. It's a, it's a physical phenomenon that happened in the DC machine. So, the the flux, the flux created by by uh, by the field winding will be transferred through. Of course, it will be created in the air gap and transferred to the from the field to the armature. When this flux, when this flux, uh, when this flux travel, let's say travel, when this flux travel to the armature, okay. Since uh, when this flux uh, uh, went or traveled to the armature, and this armature has its has its uh, its current, okay, that the current flow in this armature. This armature will create its own flux, its new flux, its new flux, which will be created in. It will be created in in the armature. So this flux, which is the new flux created in the armature, will disturb the original flux. So if we consider that this is the direction of the the field flux, the, the excitation flux, the new flux will be in this direction. So the resultant flux will will move away from to be perpendicular okay and this will affect affect the motor affect uh, everything in the motor affect the speed affect the efficiency because the flux here it's not maximum the flux is maximum when the flux is maximum when it's perpendicular cosine 90 degrees equals to one but if it's not perpendicular it will not be maximum. So, in order to solve this problem, in order to solve this problem of armature reaction, so we add the compensating winding. That's why I said we, in such machines, we may find extra winding. Okay, so much of the armature reaction effect be neutralized by using the compensating winding which we is fitted in slot so there are uh, this extra winding added in here in the field you can see we add those compensating winding so those are compensating winding so they are placed in the field but i they are connected in series to to the armature those poles, so they they will be they will be uh, arranged in a way to oppose the armature MMF. So what will happen? Okay, so let's do it. Uh, so let's uh, let's do, okay. Let's explain it like this. Okay, so if this is the field winding, okay, came from the field. So this field will be disturbed by what? It will be disturbed by, by the armature new flux, like this. So it will change its direction. 
this flux will change its direction. Okay. Now, what is the role of the the arm, the compensating winding? The compensating winding, they will create another flux to correct this. So it's opposed to 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 cancel the effect of the armature winding. Then the flux will return again to its direction. I hope. Uh, I hope uh, you you get it. Okay, so it's uh, we add this compensating from their uh, from their mean from their uh, name. You can understand what what uh, what the role of those uh, wind. So their role. Yes, the current through new coil. What what about it? It's. They are connected in series to the armature, so it's the armature current. But that's why I said when we said the, uh, the armature resistance may include another resistances, not just not just the internal armature winding. Yes, yes, they are connected in series. Huh? You can see it here. They are connected in series. Okay, we we do not need another third source. Okay, so. Those, uh, those uh, will add, of course, they will add more losses because they will have another resistance. But uh, they rules, they rule to to correct that that error or that uh, that we let's call it uh, divergence. I mean, here have methylene, okay, of the original flux of the field. But those compensating winding does not uh, they're not found uh, in all machines. They don't exist in all machines. In such machines, you found them. In another machines, you may do not found them. Okay. So you can see here what we are what we have said. The only disadvantage of the compensating winding is they are very expensive. For this reason, they only use it in large DC machines. Okay, so they are not found in all all machines. So their role is just to to neutralize or to cancel the effect of the armature reaction. Concerning this part, uh, concerning this part, this part, if we go in details, uh, it has a lot of calculation. For example, I can. I can give you, uh, I, for example, you may have question, how much, how much compensating winding we need to compensate that amount of uh, armature reaction? So you need to do calculation, how much we must have turns and et cetera, et cetera. But I avoided to the, add this, uh, that uh, analysis because it's more, it's very complicated, okay? It's need uh, it's need uh, to go deep and deep in electric machine design. But for me, I focus on the operation. I'm not focusing on those uh, those uh, details. Okay. So this is the end of uh, the first part. Uh, let's move now to the second part. Okay. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> okay. I hope uh, what we have done is clear. You just need to read it again carefully to try to organize those information. Okay. This second part. I try to make it short as as I can, okay, as I could. But uh, I missed a lot of things. That's why I'm thinking to add another session. Maybe maybe short session. I don't know. I will tell you, okay, if it's necessary. If it's not necessary, if you have just uh, another extra information, I may I may give 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 it to you. In, in the classroom session, okay.
I will see if it's need another session or not. Okay. We have we still have another hour. So let's try to finish this part. <laughs>